You either use the internet for fun or you use the internet to grow. You're here to grow. Welcome to TRS Clips. We as a brand often get criticized for highlighting the power of semen. Okay. Um there is a movement called the NoFap movement which is basically it's a worldwide thing where a lot of men have decided mm. to retain semen. Mm. Why? Okay. The western perspective is that Muhammad Ali, Tesla, all mm. these people used to retain semen and they felt benefits of it. Mm. My opinion on it is that when you combine semen retention with mm. yoga, mm. it's um more beneficial. Like that's where the actual benefits of retaining semen come through. uh please correct me if i'm wrong or if your opinion differs i feel like retaining semen that practice can become very frustrating especially for a younger guy mm. when you're a teenager you're full of mm. hormones your mm. your system isn't set mm. yet mm. so maybe it's not even a practice for everyone mm. and in saying that mm. every single person who ever follows yoga mm. who ever follows any sort of spiritual path mm. always highlights the power of semen mm. and celibacy when even when you're talking about mm. uh mm. celibacy for women mm. um you know staying mm. away from mm. sex mm. is highlighted as a positive mm. thing mm. to help you on your yogic mm. journey mm. Mm. where do you want to begin this conversation from the last statement that's because uh, that's correct so this is highlighted as a spiritual benefit uh, in my opinion it is uh, and i mind you uh, my perspective of all that i'm saying is only from the spiritual perspective sure. okay not so uh, outside of that context why somebody want to wants to retain semen or why not i have no interest and in, i don't even know so mm. i can't even uh, comment on that movement mm. what is the goal and aim etc but uh, there is a benefit to maintaining celibacy but it should not be taken to the level that okay that is the final goal that if i maintain celibacy everything is going to fall in place no you are going to get complete nuts you will be crazy there is a selective uh release and a selective celibacy that has to be combined together so that it works out that is why our dharma the hindu dharma says that there are four goals in the average person's life dharma is one of them which is your sense of religion righteousness etc uh, dharma artha which is your money that you earn or the prosperity kama which is your lust and which is your desires and etc and finally there is moksha so if kama was something that you should be completely rejecting out of it so uh, if you, if you without kama there is no life in the first place okay so it is there it is the only thing that they are talking about basically fundamentally is that uh, like water to give a simple example like water and like if you if that proverbial newton's apple follows flows downwards because the gravity is going to pull you down and things like that water flows from higher and to lower etc so if you indulge unrestricted in sexual activity it is more or less going to pull your powers uh, energies down and you will feel a, a lack of as i said very simply speaking kind of tiredness mantra sadhana uh, any kind of spiritual practice at the initial stages has to make you a little bit more uh, alert uh, energetic less sleepy in fact one of the things that uh, uh, if you do a practice it is when you are sleeping that is when you are most unguarded by the way okay initial stages so higher level yogis actually they try to transcend even sleep very high level it's i'm not again these cannot be forced so my view point in celibacy is that do not even force it but maintain a certain decorum and discipline in it don't run around everybody and everything that you feel like you know having a relationship with not like that have a basic common sense idea of how much you can indulge and how much you do not and this idea is by the way this uh the way i'm describing it is not something very unique or something i have thought about uh, our texts will tell you that for a married man uh to have a physical relationship with his wife is also celibacy hmm nobody not any point are we asking people that you leave everything and become a sanyasi is this a, is there a specific text oh this is the general idea of celibacy that if you are a married man in the vedic vedic system why do you think the vedic karmakanda rituals mandate that 90% of the rituals is barred for an individual who is not married you cannot sit in a vedic fire ritual proper vedic fire ritual if you don't have legally married wife with you you are barred from it doesn't matter how good your meditation is how much yoga you can do and etc and how much brahmacharya you follow you don't have a wife you are not married you cannot sit there do some spiritual processes start only after marriage uh, uh if you were to practice uh, certain tantric upasanas yes but more or less marriage is a very balancing thing in my opinion uh, and it's helpful in if if your partner is also you know of the spiritual bent of mind i mean obviously uh, but and coming back what most she's not 
हाँ देन यो बैड लक नथिंग मच आई कैन से अबाउट दैट सो कमिंग बैक टू द पॉइंट बट देर इज इट इज नॉट टू से दैट आई एम नॉट अगेन नॉट टू मिसकनस्ट्रू वट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से आई एम नॉट सेंग दैट दैट मीन्स दैट यू हैव अनरेस्ट्रिक्टेड यू नो physical relationships no celibacy has its utility also it builds up certain power during that limited phase of time uh, when you are following it uh, so my recommendation to people who are actually in the path of any kind of spiritual practice is that uh, and i and i deal more with people who are into the worship of deities the tantric tantra sadhana mantra sadhana using mantras tantras the puja paddhati so suppose you are into an anushthana of a deity so you take a you make a a sankalpa or a promise to a deity for 10 days or 15 days or 21 days so you follow limited period of celibacy during that time the only reason is that when you follow celibacy and you do that practice it helps building up power inside you however power is only useful if you have the capacity to digest it if you don't digest it one of the other things that happens for example you start doing a lot of mantra sadhana of any deity suddenly okay with no practice beforehand you start 4 5 hours of mantra japa today you, the first thing that you you are going to see after some days is the tremendous increase in lust tremendous increase in anger these are the two leaks through which the power is going to get out of you because your system simply does not have the capacity to absorb it you can eat only that much food as much as your stomach can digest other things are going to get vomited out this is the spiritual vomiting that happens you will end up having all sorts of you know running around everybody uh, physical relationships unrestricted and then uh, anger unrestricted these two things the balancing how much of a spiritual power a particular individual can take through the practice and how much of a uh, 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 you know a physical relationship or any an anger by the way is equally dangerous it, it just in, in a second your power whatever you have accumulated is also going to go out this is where the role of a mentor a guru is so important because you will take a lot of time to figure out that what is it that works for you a good mentor a good guru who can handle you and i'm not saying and i don't mean that you know there are many organizations where you go and there are 1000 people getting an initiation and then after that for 10 years you have no clue where your guru is and where you are sitting at home and doing practice no i mean somebody who actually handholds and guides you step by step sort of at least and tells you that what to do and what not to do so there is no idea like this initially um, and it should not even be encouraged that right now from this age become completely celibate forget everything and it is going to make you uh, some spiritual superstar nothing of that sort is going to happen what do you think of masturbation same 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 principle that happens in celibacy same principle so if somebody is masturbating and he is uh, practicing some spiritual same thing there's a leakage of energy that is going to happen so whatever i talked about right now in the course of a physical relationship etc remove the word physical relationship add masturbation same thing there's no mm -hmm. difference it is not going to make any other good or bad or anything and i'm not talking even from a moralistic perspective i don't care what anybody does in their privacy but um, unrestricted yes definitely it is going to interfere with your process uh, with your sadhana at a higher stage and uh, one of the biggest uh, disadvantages of unrestricted sexual encounters or masturbation for that matter is that um, uh, as i say in the peak point of concentration you should be like this when you are sitting for your japa or uh, yoga or meditation or whatever at that peak moment you should be able to forget the whole world even if that is for 2 seconds then it is working for you what happens with unrestricted uh, either whether physical encounters unrestricted sexual encounters or uh, excessive masturbation is that it is at that peak moment that your chitta which is the you know kind of the the mind that has impressions it is going to throw up all sorts of images and immediately it is going to break your concentration very minor thing but your practice is already gone you can pretend to the outside world that you are a great yogi and you are doing a lot of practice but your inside your practice is not working so that is the problem on the other hand if you completely say that oh from today no no physical no sex no masturbation no nothing you have to become i don't know what uh, uh, two days you'll go crazy neither mm. is mantra is going to work neither the practice is going to work neither this is going to work mm. so that balancing is important and we live in that kind of an age where to sell a toothpaste you have to put two skimpily clad women on the advertisement mm. where is your celibacy going to come from mm, yeah the society we live in stimulates us to yeah. shoot so a load off that is where you have to maintain that common sense use common sense and balance and no point in the spiritual journey are you to give up your common sense 
you will yeah. end up becoming a fool yeah yeah also i mean this is just a personal thought here not learned from a book probably learned from experiences mm-hmm. my thought is that if a spiritual truth does not make sense to you and your subjective reality no one's asking you to accept it yeah so if this is against your thoughts yeah. don't accept it hmm. and i am not even judgmental of people who say by the way j- just because i'm sure that a lot of people will see that there may be traditional people who have uh, celibacy they put it to a very high pedestal i am not being judgmental and all that you do whatever you think is right for you hmm. but if you are asking me this is how you should approach in this age initially and the impulse celibacy comes naturally by the way yeah that i was just like literally <laughs> a second before you said that i was thinking about the same thought that mm-hmm. your libido if you're involved in a yogic life a spiritual yeah. life a tantric life yes uh your lust settles down without any effort yes after a certain point of time it will set, there are since we are on the topic there are two other factors by the way you have to remember sure. here uh i think yesterday we were discussing about um, uh, pitrus ancestors who were stuck in a pitru loka mm. who were not able to move forward very often in many cases uh, an excessive amount of lust in an individual whereas they may be practicing everything well uh, is basically a projection of the impulses of those pitrus and if it is the case and that can be analyzed through you know various uh, uh, looking at the configuration of the planets at the time they are born and various other ways of finding out that is the case then the only way is to actually perform rituals in the right kshetra in the right place so that the ancestors get reborn and then it causes when you define it in whatever way you want but it, then it has an effect that slowly that libido or that excessive amount of so normal lust is one thing normal lust everybody has but it goes beyond everything all rationality etc then it also comes down you know things calm down a bit that is one the other is with age also libido kind of can taper off um for a person who is genuinely spiritual yes that is what is happening for somebody who is not in the spiritual path it's up to them i mean i have no judgment on what they are doing or not doing it's completely their life their choice yeah. but uh, spiritually this um uh, so pitrus are one of the things by the way that is there in quite a few cases i've seen people who face sudden bursts of whether it's excessive amount of lust or whether it's excessive anger or certain uh, and that also manifests a certain blockages in life in various um, stages etc those those go off only when the pitru something is done to placate those pitrus okay and if that is there if there's a normal amount of lust then uh, to look at it as a manageable thing the other problem that happens it tapers off of it on its own it will in time okay don't don't make it as a big thing in your head that's the other problem that happens with a lot of spiritual people i am not able to get out of lust so you feel guilty about it hmm. that is far worse than actually you know uh, hmm. indulging in uh, uh, physical relationship sex or masturbation or anything after that the guilt trip that happens to some people that okay oh i i could not maintain celibacy that is not going to help you that hmm. is far worse hmm. new clips released at the same time that a podcast releases this is trs clips make sure you subscribe